Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me repeat that. Grace and peace be to you. Peace. Dear friends in Christ, have you ever had that experience where you see an ad in the newspaper or on television, one that, you know, really grabs your attention such that you literally drop whatever it is you're doing and you rush to the store to get that item that was advertised, but then only to find yourself, well, disappointed because the thing that was advertised as being so great, so wonderful, so promising actually doesn't live up to its billing. Yeah, ads can be misleading like that. And because they can be misleading like that, that is why the Federal Trade Commission established the truth in advertising requirement that seeks to protect the consumer from being suckered in to buying something that doesn't live up to its advertised promise. Well, you know something, in light of last week's gospel reading, that's still on my mind, that spoke about being uh, maligned and hated and even persecuted on account of one's association with Christ, as well as now this week's gospel reading that talks about Jesus bringing, well, not peace, but a sword. And also this week's gospel reading that talks about how a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Yes, in light of talk like that, I got thinking, I wonder if the Christian church might be guilty of violating the truth and advertising requirement. I mean, seriously, what is this about Jesus saying that he did not come to bring peace, but a sword? What are we to make of that? Now, I don't know about you, but I was always sold on the Jesus who was advertised by the Christian church as being, you know, the more quiet, the more tender, the more serene Jesus. That is the Jesus who is advertised as being the Prince of Peace, the one who at his birth was greeted with that angelic chorus that proclaimed, Peace on Earth goodwill toward men. Yes, I was sold on the Jesus who went around helping and healing people, and then after doing so, would even tell them, go in peace. In this past Easter, I know even though we uh, were shut down due to a worldwide pandemic, nevertheless, I was all in for the risen Jesus who greeted his followers with those kind, gentle, reassuring words of peace be with you. Seriously, isn't, isn't that the Jesus that you also thought you were getting here in the Christian church? So what's this talk now about not coming to bring peace, but a sword? What's with that? I've got to tell you, in light of last week's gospel reading, as well as this week's gospel reading, I think the Christian church has pulled that old bait and switch trick on us. Yeah, they pulled us in by advertising this nice, mild, comfortable, peaceful Jesus. Ah, but then once they got us in, then they tell us, oh, and by the way, this kind, uh, gentle, wonderful Jesus, uh, he also has a few rough spots on him. Yes, please be advised, you might find that following him may bring some challenges, some difficulties into your life that you will now have to contend with as his follower. I guess you might say that's the small print, isn't it? 
Well, my friends, today in the spirit of truth in advertising, I'd like to set the record straight with you. You see, as a, a pastor in the Lord's church, I, I feel I have an obligation to be truthful with you. So the truth is, if you really want to be a follower of Christ, then there are some things, yes, some very important things that you should know. As a matter of fact, I have three important truths that I'd like to share with you today as you consider the investment that one makes in following Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. The first truth I'd like to share with you is this. There are unintended consequences that come with being associated with Jesus. Now, often we talk about the intended consequences, do we not, that come with faith in Jesus, and for good reason. I mean, you know, good things like forgiveness of sins, e eternal life in heaven, peace with God, our Creator, and, uh, and other good things along those lines. However, it's important to remember that there is the proverbial flip side of the coin. There are also what we might call, well, unintended consequences that come with faith in Jesus. You see, whereas faith in Jesus brings a load of wonderful benefits with it, no doubt about that, the truth is it also brings its share of heavy burdens. It is said that faith in Christ is like that of a, a surgeon's scalpel. I mean, on, on one hand, it, it brings about health and healing. But then on the other hand, it can also bring about momentary pain and even suffering. You see, this truth of unintended consequences, it, it plays out, we we find as we read the Bible in the lives of the followers of Jesus. Take a person like the Apostle Paul, for example. You remember, Paul was that guy who said that knowing Christ was his greatest blessing in life. He even went as far as to say that nothing compared with knowing Christ. And that compared to Christ, he went on to say everything else is just rubbish, garbage. Literally, it's manure. Clearly, Paul saw value in having a relationship with Christ Jesus. And yet, my friends, at the same time, Paul also knew that a relationship with Jesus took work, a lot of work. And it required sacrifice, sometimes great sacrifice, and it even could mean that others might mistreat you and harm you. Matter of fact, in 2 Corinthians, uh, the Apostle Paul elaborates on what some of those unintended consequences of being associated with Jesus uh, included <clears throat> for him. Uh, listen to what he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He writes, three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have constantly been on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers. And going on, he says, I have I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. And beside everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Now, friends, Paul's situation was certainly unique, no doubt about it and certainly was, you might say, more the exception, thank God, than the rule. 
But the point remains, there are unintended consequences, you might say, with being associated with Jesus. The truth is, living the Christian life is more than simply enjoying the peaceful serenity of, say, a worship service once a week where you, you might have your favorite hymn played and enjoy a nice, comforting, soothing message preached to you from the pulpit. No, living the Christian life, the Bible tells us, means taking up your cross daily and following Jesus. And you know, sometimes that means going places that you may not have otherwise intended to go. That is, going places that may be challenging to you, demanding for you. That's the first truth. The second truth I want to share with you today about the reality of the uh, Christian faith is this. Water is thicker than blood. Now, at first glance, you may be thinking to yourself, Pastor, you've got that turned around. Isn't that supposed to be blood is thicker than water? Well, my friends, the truth is, when it comes to the Christian faith, the water of our baptism actually runs thicker, if you will, than the blood of familial relationships. This is why uh, Jesus said what he said here in our gospel reading, for I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and so forth. Yes, it's what Jesus meant here when he said a person's enemies will be those of his own household. I know that's hyperbole, and it is hyperbole, or hyperbole, but the point is there's this union that fellow believers in Christ share with one another that is actually stronger than that of biological or marital relationships. You know, those of us who were brought up, say, in a Christian household probably can't appreciate this truth as much as, say, our brothers and sisters in the faith who were not brought up in a Christian household can appreciate this truth. And yet, I can assure you there are many fellow believers out there who do, not, uh, who do know, who do know firsthand what it is like to be a follower of Christ while at the same time being part of a biological family that rejects him. I have, <clears throat> I have had conversations with those who find themselves in that situation and they have shared with me the, the mean, the vile, the hateful verbal abuse that they've encountered from, uh, uh, say, a spouse or a, a parent, sibling, who will mock and ridicule their faith in Christ. Friends, imagine living under those kind of circumstances. Or maybe, maybe you don't have to imagine. Maybe you yourself have encountered such abuse. What a heavy cross that is to bear. But the truth is, such crosses cannot be avoided in this fallen world in which we live. Even Jesus himself had to carry that particular cross while living in this world. In the Bible, we learn that his own biological family thought he had a screw loose, that he was out of his mind. And for a time anyway, they did not even believe who he claimed to be, the Messiah of God. The third truth that I'd like to share with you in the final one today is the rea about the reality of uh, the Christian faith is this. You'll lose, but you'll also gain. Now granted, most advertisers would not put it that way, would they? No. No, most advertisers would skip right over that you'll lose part, and they'll go directly to telling you what you will gain by placing your faith in Christ. And of course, uh, a deceitful advertiser 
would most likely tell you that faith in Christ is going to automatically translate into health and wealth and prosperity for your life. But dear friends, truth in advertising would not allow such claims like that to go unchallenged. Therefore, let me set the record straight. Now, first of all, it is true. Jesus does promise certain benefits and rewards for those who follow him. I shared that with the kids in the children's message this morning. For instance, though, in Matthew chapter 19, the apostle Peter says to Jesus, Lord, we have left everything, everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? He asked. Now, listen to how Jesus answers Peter's question. Jesus says, I tell you the truth, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, in other words, at the end of time, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And he goes on to say, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. Clearly, there are benefits, rewards that come with faith in Christ. And, and not just, you know, those off in the future someday, but also right here and now. Like, for example, the, the gift uh, of being able to have joy in the midst of sorrow. Having peace in the midst of a, a very chaotic, confusing world in which we live. Possessing hope in the midst of pain and despair. However, let's not forget what we heard in last week's gospel reading where Jesus said, a disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. And Jesus actually elaborates on that statement further in John's gospel, chapter 15, where he says, remember the words I spoke to you? A servant is not greater than his master. Look, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. And in his letter to Timothy, the Apostle Paul reiterates that point by saying, everyone who lives a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Yes, it's true. As a follower of Christ, you'll lose. You will lose. You may lose any number of things included, but not limited to things like your popularity among others, prestige, maybe family or friends. Why, you may even lose your life. But at the same time, you will also gain. And not only will you gain the free gift of eternal life and countless other spiritual blessings, but also, as Jesus alludes to here in our gospel reading today, you're living out his word and all that you say and do, friend, it will not be in vain. It will not be in vain. Rather, it will be effective. Yes, you see, the sword that Jesus brings into this world is the sword of his holy word. And that sword will cut to the heart of every man, woman, and child. And again, like a surgeon's scalpel, it will hurt as it exposes sin, but at the same time, it will also heal as it proclaims God's forgiveness and eternal salvation. Yes, not everyone is going to let that sword, the word of the Lord, do its intended saving work. Not everyone is going to repent and believe the good news. But dear friends, as we keep plugging away, doing the Lord's work here at St. Peter's, as well as in our own daily lives throughout the week, well, the message of salvation will get out, just as God intends for it to get out. And as a result, some will join us in repenting of their sin and believing the good news of forgiveness and salvation 
in Christ Jesus. So there you have it, truth in advertising today. Yes, there are unintended consequences that come with being associated with Jesus. We call them unintended, but you know the great thing about our God, those unintended things, he always works for our good. And yes, the water of our baptism is in fact thicker than blood. And yeah, you'll lose, hey, but you will also gain. And you will gain so much more. Dear friends, keep those truths in mind as you answer the Lord's call to be his disciple. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen.